the book of life. Dispensational Bible study not only assists the believer in understanding the distinctions between the various ages of human history, but also helps divide between individuals, places, events, and things. This statement on the surface may seem insignificant, but understanding distinctions in these areas can help avoid the increase in false doctrines. One area that many find confusing concerns the actual details surrounding what the Bible says concerning the Book of Life found several times in the Bible, or the Lamb's Book of Life, occurring only once in Revelation 21:27. Before proceeding, it is helpful to dispel a commonly held concept regarding the Book of Life. Most people believe that God is presently compiling names to be added to the Book of Life and has been doing so throughout human history. However, the Bible teaches otherwise. The Bible says that men are kept in the book of life or removed from it based upon their relationship with God. Nowhere in the Bible does it indicate that a name is ever added to the book of life. The songs we sing often compound the misconceptions. We sing songs such as a new name in glory with a chorus, there's a new name written down in glory, or the song, he wrote my name with a chorus, I never could forget the day that Jesus wrote my name within the blessed book of life and took my sins away. Christians may find joy in singing these songs, but they unfortunately propagate the false concept that God is presently writing names into the book of life. To get a more complete understanding of the biblical concept of the book of life, we need to consider five crucial elements concerning this subject. Number one, the book of life is synonymous with the Lamb's book of life. Comparing scripture with scripture in the book of Revelation clearly demonstrates this truth. Revelation chapter 21 refers to the Lamb's book of life, while chapter 13 makes reference to the book of life of the Lamb. Revelation 21, 27. Revelation 21, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Number two, the book of life alone is the book that determines one's eternal destination. According to Revelation 21, 27, the determination whether a person enters the holy city, New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, 1, is determined by a simple fact. Does their name appear in the Lamb's book of life? Revelation 21, 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Earlier in the chapter, we read the stipulation for one's name to appear in the book of life. Only those who overcome are found in the book of life, Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Those who proclaim that someone can earn his salvation point to overcoming as though one overcomes through his own power or effort. Yet according to Revelation 12:11, the overcoming only takes place by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12:11, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Notice that this overcoming does not mean that the person overcomes to live a longer life. In fact, just the opposite is true. They love not their lives unto the death. Unfortunately, many people living at that time will reject God's forgiveness and end up standing condemned before the great white throne judgment. This judgment involves the opening of the books, plural, followed by the opening of another singular book. The opening of these initial books is not to be confused with the book of life or the Lamb's book of life. Interestingly, Daniel prophesied concerning the opening of the book at the great white throne judgment, and his prophecy shows that these books do not determine one's eternal destination. Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Additionally, Revelation chapter 20 clearly distinguishes between the books plural and the singular book. Revelation 20 verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Revelation 20:12. 12, another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
The books will be used to judge the dead according to their works, yet it is the book of life alone that determines one's eternal destiny. While the book of life is mentioned here, not until later in the chapter is its purpose expressed. The dead are not judged out of the book of life because it seems only to contain names. However, the books contain the commandments, the laws, the ordinances that will judge the individual's works. Revelation 20:12, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. According to this passage, the books determine the magnitude of one's judgment. It is important to note that Revelation 20, verse 15, serves the key concerning whether a person will be cast in the lake of fire. Those whose names are not found written in the book of life are the only ones condemned. Revelation 20, verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. The sole reason for the eternal damnation of an individual is a person's name being absent from the book of life. However, the individual's works, when aligned against the judgments found in the books, determine the severity of his eternal judgment. The purpose of opening the books is not to determine who merits salvation. Instead, the purpose of these books is to determine whether he is to receive more or less stripes Luke 12, verses 45 through 48. Number three, initially the book of life contains the names of all the living. Additionally, there's no reason to believe that the book of the living differs from the book of life. This book indicates that all living persons would be found in it, whether righteous or unrighteous. Everyone is in the book of life until he or she dies, having rejected God, with the exception mentioned later during Daniel's 70th week where a name can be removed prior to death. Isaiah 4, verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, he that remaineth in Jerusalem, shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Psalm 69, 28, Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. Number 4, The Bible never gives any indication that names are written in the book of life. However, it does show that names can and are blotted out. According to Revelation 17, 8, names were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Those who trust Christ are assured that their names remain in the book. In fact, Jesus told his disciples to rejoice in the fact that their names were written in heaven. Additionally, the book of Hebrews also references the great blessing of having names written in heaven. Luke 10, 20, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hebrews 12, 23, To the general assembly in the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. These two instances of names written in heaven seem likely to refer to names being written in the book of life. The Lord tells his disciples to rejoice in this fact, indicating that there are instances when a person's name will not be found written in that book. Psalm 69 explains the process by which a man's name ceases to remain among the righteous. Psalm 69:28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. David prayed for his enemies to be blotted out of the book of the living. Yet there's another interesting point to be considered. Once these names were blotted out, the only names that remained were the righteous, presumably because of their relationship to the Lord. Comparing David's writings to passages in Deuteronomy reveals that names are blotted out from under heaven. This, however, could deal more with posterity and lineage rather than the book of life. Deuteronomy 29.20 And the Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Repeatedly, the Bible mentions being blotted out, but never once does the Bible mention names being written in the book of life inside of time, i.e. not in eternity past. The book of Revelation further identifies how a man avoids having his name blotted out of the book of life. Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. The Bible declares how this overcoming is accomplished in the church age. By believing that Jesus is the Son of God, 1 John 5, 5, and by reserving it for those who are born of God, 1 John 5, 4. During Daniel's 70th week, those who overcome do so 
by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Revelation 12, 11. Footnote number one, the word of their testimony, Revelation 12, 11, is clearly defined in the book of Revelation. Those who died during Daniel's 70th week died because of the testimony which they held, Revelation 6, 9, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 12, 17, Revelation 1, 2, and 9. This applies to all believers, Jew and Gentile alike, during this seven-year period. Interestingly, just before John mentions heaven opening with the armies readied for their return to earth, the angel tells John that he is a fellow servant with John's brethren who have the testimony of Jesus, Revelation 19.10. This parallels what Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers, that the testimony of Christ was confirmed in them, 1 Corinthians 1.6. In the context of this passage, Michael the archangel has cast Satan to the earth, Revelation 12.7-9. Satan immediately begins pursuing the woman, Israel, Revelation 12, 6, and 13 through 17. How will Israel overcome during this most dreadful period? The same way all others have overcome, by the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Ultimately, all those throughout all ages who reject God's forgiveness will be blotted out of God's book. The story of Moses' life offers further insights. Exodus chapter 32 covers the descent of Moses from the mount with the original Ten Commandments written on tables of stone. While Moses was on the mountain, Aaron fashioned the molten calf for the people to worship in place of God. This resulted in God expressing his desire to destroy the people and start over with a new nation headed by Moses. Moses pleaded for the people and asked that his name be blotted out of God's book, the book of life. Exodus 32:32. 32, 32. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. God rejected Moses' plea and offered some interesting insights for understanding the book of life. There are other examples that offer further illumination. Paul's words, when he wished to be accursed for his Jewish brethren, were very similar to the pleas of Moses. Paul wanted his brethren saved and was willing to be blotted out for them. Romans 9, 3, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Of course, neither Moses nor Paul could will to have their names removed from God's book, no matter the extent of their love for their brethren. Number 5. Those whose names are sealed in the book of life are preserved and protected. Names are blotted out at death when that person no longer has any hope of trusting God. However, Daniel's 70th week presents a unique set of circumstances and a different scenario surrounding the book of life. In fact, this time has caused great concern because of the presence of the mark of the beast and the worship that he receives. During this future age, the world worships the beast, at least a certain defined segment of the world's population. Revelation 13.8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, that is the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The beast worshippers are clearly identified. These devil worshippers are those whose names are not in the Lamb's book of life. Something is obviously different about this time. Up until this point in history, man always has an opportunity until death to trust in the Lord for salvation. Things drastically change during Daniel's 70th week, but in one respect, they do not. Everyone's name is in the book of life until a point at which God's forgiveness is rejected. We need to consider why these people are no longer written in the book of life of the Lamb. Some would claim that they worship the beast because their names are not in the book of life. That's putting the proverbial cart before the horse. The correct understanding would be that their worship of the beast exhibits a total repudiation of God's saving grace while they are still alive. Only this unpardonable sin can cause names to be blotted out of the book of life. As in Exodus 32, 32, the sin comes first, followed by the blotting out. The underlying element is a lack of faith. Conversely, the Lord promised a preserving power to those who know and trust in him in Daniel's 70th week. As part of the kingdom gospel, the Lord told his followers not to take thought for their basic provisions, things which having the mark of the beast would provide, Matthew 6.25 and also verse 31. Additionally, they were not to fear how they would respond when called before the councils, Luke 12, 8 through 12. The worshipers of the beast chose to receive the mark of the beast. These people experienced the wrath of God while upon earth and for all eternity with no hope of redemption. No hope means that their names are no longer written in the book. 
Revelation 14, 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoso receiveth the mark of his name. Yet those whose names are sealed in the book of life by trusting in the Lord will be preserved in the face of such temptation. Speaking of that time, a time of trouble, a.k.a. Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Daniel promised sure deliverance of God's people and specifically the deliverance of those written in the book. Daniel 12, 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. The Bible clearly distinguishes between those who receive deliverance versus those who live under God's condemnation during the time of Jacob's trouble. Only those written in the Lamb's book are delivered, physically spared. Those who have rejected God's forgiveness, His mercy and His grace, have done so by choosing to worship the beast and take his mark. This has caused their names to be forever removed from the book of life. Revelation 17, 8, The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. Those who trust in the Lord keep their names in the book of life. In fact, their names will have been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. These will be the ones supernaturally delivered. Others who have rejected God's truth and his forgiveness worship and serve the beast. Thus, their names have been removed from the book of life. Lastly, we must consider one last problem passage. The context of God's truth sheds light on what many consider a difficult concept found in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. Many people, even those living in the church age, have allowed this text to make them think that salvation can be earned and lost. Revelation 22:18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these words, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. Never allow a more obscure teaching to override the plain teaching or cause you to dismiss the truths of Scripture. Some people have assumed that this passage teaches that a saved man can hear the words of the prophecy of Revelation and add to or take away from the words, thus resulting in a loss of salvation. Yet this is not what the Bible says. This passage, nor any other passage in the Bible, ever suggests that a saved person can lose his salvation. Rather, it teaches that those who add or take away from the words of the prophecy shall have their part taken out of the book of life and out of the holy city. During Daniel's 70th week specifically, the saints are guided, protected, preserved, and are to take no thought for the things which they speak when brought before councils. The only consistent teaching would refer to the blotting out of those who refuse God's forgiveness and his salvation. While one might point to the fact that the man would be said to have part in the book of life and in the holy city, it must be remembered that all names start out in this book and that hell was not created for man and any man going there is missing out on his part of the holy city, Matthew twenty-five forty-one. Remember the words of the Lord are eternal truths. During man's entire existence upon the earth, he can do nothing without God. John fifteen five. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. This is the end of chapter 40.